So I'm going to start a new series called Check the Mirrors, where I look in the past at your comments, questions, concerns, ideas, whatever, and I'm picking from them ones that I want to share with everybody. Uh, I can't believe there are 5,000 subscribers. That's incredible. I wish I could answer everybody's questions these days, but it's overwhelming. Uh, so I have to just select the best ones and go from there. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Oh, I should also say that uh, I'm an enthusiast. I'm gonna talk about things as I understand them and I might be wrong. So now let's go. <laughs> so I've had some questions about overclocking. Here's one from Jordan Harris. Hey. <laughs> My 7900 XTX is amazing at 4K iRacing. Wait a couple weeks for the drivers to not be in beta before you judge. I bet you didn't even overclock your 9070 XT. Astute observation, Jordan. Yes. <laughs> oh, I have my headphones on. So uh, there are two reasons why I don't go through with overclocking or undervolting custom memory timings, things like that. Those two reasons are system instability. It's not in my interest to make my systems for benchmarking unstable. Uh, it's hard enough to get all of these platforms running smoothly and consistently. The last thing I wanna do is my own custom tuning that causes crashes. That, that just sounds like wasting time to me. Uh, and the second option, speaking of wasting time, is if I miss a step in my operating procedures, like each benchmark run I go through, I have a checklist of all the things I enable, disable, customize, set up for each uh, motherboard, for each processor, for each graphics card. If I was to add in that custom tuning, it would like, it would increase the list like at twice as many things to do. And then if I miss one, when I do the configuration, then all of a sudden that benchmark run or series of runs or that group of testing, it's now erroneous or it's inconsistent to other runs that I've done. So I just, I can't do it for that sake. Now, can, should you uh, overclock or undervolt? Sure, if you wanna push to that limit. But all I do is I uh, basically hit the switch on the mother on the graphics card. Usually they have an OC profile, a BIOS profile, which increases power limits, fan curves, things like that. But um, I also go into MSI Afterburner and I just take the fan uh, curve. I make all the fans run at 95%. Um, I don't go 100% just because 95 sounds fine, uh, around the 90s. And they never run into thermal issues. Um, and that's all I do. And I close Afterburner. Do not leave Afterburner open when you do stuff like that. Close it. Uh, make sure it is not running. Check your processes. Yeah. Um, next question. So Mark Fish writes in and says, I had so many lag and sputter issues since I built my new PC uh, with a 9070 XT. Uh, I reloaded all of Windows and did the firmware update and so far no issues. I am a big fan of this. Do not be attached to your operating system. Back up your stuff, your data, your files, your photos, your movies, your whatever, back it all up. And you should not hesitate to completely reinstall Windows, in my opinion. Uh, I do it all the time. And um, especially with the new drives, the NVMe drives, they're so fast. You can delete everything and install fresh Windows in less than an hour just like that. So if you do a major update, don't just carry forward your Windows operating system from the last five years. Do not do that. I don't care if it still runs, so many things can go wrong. So install fresh Windows often. Okay, rant. Okay, uh, well, the next one isn't really a question. Uh, <laughs> listen, I, I, don't, I don't play sides on this. I want fair competition between GeForce uh, Radeon, Arc, I, I want, I mean, it's in all of our interests for that. But if I find an issue, I'm gonna report on my experience. That's all I, I can do. Next, okay, I get questions like this fairly often. Bro, <laughs> the sim racing guys aren't doing proper reviews either because the wheel, motion system, seatbelt tensioner, running sim hub, butt kickers, fan, motion compensation, I think is what he's trying to say here, are eating up 13% idle CPU, doubles in action. So I'm wondering if my Intel i9 is the best option over Ryzen. There's the 9050X3D that just came out. I don't have one. Um, it, he's thinking it probably doesn't optimize the use of the idle cores. What are my thoughts on this? 
Okay, I have a few thoughts. What you're really asking is, how do each one of those applications impact the CPU and therefore steal resources from running a simulator? And then how do they all uh, function together to steal resources from the simulator? And I'm using steal twice because that's what's happening. Every time you run something, I don't get Spotify in the background, Discord in the background, um, your some uh, Facebook, I don't know, all this other stuff. Every time you're running something that is not the simulator, it's making your simulator probably run worse. It's the way it works. So let's consider a analogy of this. Uh, many moons ago, I had a road and track subscription and I loved it. It was great. And I could, uh, one of the things I really liked was the comparison uh, tests that they did. They would take all these different supercars, whatever, and they'd run them through the same roads, the same tracks, and they would compare them. Benchmark, if you will. What your question is saying is, okay, well, most people who have this car, they're gonna have their significant other in the passenger seat as a co-pilot. Maybe they have a child's booster seat in the back or uh, extra tools or groceries in the trunk. You know, that's real world performance. That's what's really happening on the roads. Why don't you benchmark with that stuff in the car? Well, <laughs> no, no, I'm not gonna do that. Um, you, you are responsible for what you put into your car, just like you are responsible for what you install on your system and how you configure it. It's no one else. Um, the unique config, it's an infinite number of unique configurations out there of how to set up SimHub, what exact effects are being used, what USB devices are plugged in. I just, I just don't want to, I don't want to start investigating the performance of other third party software. Like that's just out of hand, man. That, that is just too much, too much, too many variables. I am trying to reduce variables, not add them. Maybe it's an interesting one-off video that I'll do. I know people about streaming bring this up. What's the best processor for streaming? But there's only so many different ways to stream. So like, oh, just loaded questions. Um, I'm not sure how to answer them yet. All right, next question I think is from Philippe. Uh, your benchmarks are extremely important to DCS users. Thank you very much. Aw. Uh, a note on the context of the benchmarks. I think we should leave the LED at one. Indeed, it influences distance objects, for example. Sure, yeah, and I want to benchmark DCS again. I need a track file from you DCS guys. I don't have time to learn how to fly a jet. I don't, it's so cool, but it's so much time. I don't know how to fly a jet. If I go in a multiplayer <laughs> server, I'm just gonna be destroyed instantly. So um, if you have a track file for an F-18, I'd love to see it. It just needs to be like usable within the first 10 minutes. Um, yeah. And then uh, regarding the search for the best processors, the 0.1% uh, and 1% lows are super important. Yeah, with VR, I totally agree with that as well. What about the 14900K or just 14900? So, okay, small rant. Listen, the 14th gen from Intel shouldn't exist. It exists because of all the delays they had on their new node, which eventually led to a processor that is um, heavily discounted and bundled, let's say, uh, with 5090s these days. I have a 13700K. It's close. It's, it's the processor that is most reasonable out of the three generations that were on LGA 1700. I think it was probably the most popular as well. That's why I have one. Is it 10%, 15%? Sure, but it's not gonna cover the distance to a 9800X3D. It's just not. And at the bottom here, DCS doesn't necessarily run on its own on a PC. It's bundled with other software, SRS, Open Nibor, Attack View, the way. Again, these, this is what we were just talking about. I understand that you guys are using all this custom software, but you're also all going to individually configure it differently from one another. And they're gonna interact in different ways. Yes, it, it's all consuming CPU resources, I totally agree with that. That's something that you have to take uh, into account when you use it. Sorry, I think that last one was out of focus. Hopefully this is better. We got another one from Cost9. Uh, really great review, man. You definitely go into the core of the performance. I'm sure many people found this use, uh, information useful. Thank you. Hope you guys did. Um, one question. I know you will also do a deep dive into VR. 
I am looking at LMU. I have been a little frustrated with the experience. Um, there's something about the optics of it. It makes me feel uncomfortable. I don't know what's going on. I'm still investigating that. It looks like he's wondering about the Quest 3 uh, uh, specifically because he talks about virtual desktop, Wi-Fi router. You know, could a network issue cause some kind of quality difference? I guess, yes, network traffic could bog down. I've seen people who have issues when they run extenders, when they have other people on their home network that are streaming Netflix or uploading, things like that. Like all of that is bad news for Wi-Fi transfer. And this goes back to the same conversation we were having about with CPUs. Anything that's gonna steal Wi-Fi from you is going to impact um, the bandwidth that can be delivered to the Quest headset or what the processor inside the router can handle. I don't have benchmarks on it. I'm not a network guy. I don't really know how to answer that in a technical way. Um, so maybe someone in the comments can uh, shed some light on that. All right, that's all I got for today. Use the comments below to point out my mistakes or uh, share some of more insight. You can get direct consultation from benchmarkodysseys at gmail.com or use super thanks and Patreon to support me. Um, yeah, that's it. Bye.